Live, a platform to sharing your thoughts. All right. Hello, Ashil. How are you? It's been so, it's so great to see you here. You know. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I remember I, we, we met in February. Probably towards the end of February, you you came to Udaipur and we yes. we met. Yeah. And just it, just before everything shut down. Just before all all these uh, pandemics happened. The last the last time I saw nature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, Ashil, you know what? I wish you would have been locked down in Udaipur. You would have been staying with me. Yes, yes, yes. Well, uh, yeah. A lot of things. Uh, we could I, have I wish I could have been locked down in the Lake Palace. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, indeed, indeed. Yeah. So, it's so great to be with you, Ashil. Uh, and I'm um, so we are uh, me Ashil and me are so thankful to City Live, uh, the channel which is from Jaipur, and I have some connection with Jaipur because I lived there for three years, and uh, and uh, Satyajit and me also connected. Anyway, so today's conversation or dialogue is uh, is going to be about with a very dear friend of mine, Ashil, who I have, been no, I have known him since, uh, I'd say 1985, since I was in Ahmedabad. Yeah. And I'm Ashil was the yeah. director of Allion Francais. And he used to show some amazing French films. He used to persuade us to Uncensored learn- Uncensored French films. And? Uncensored French films. Uncensored French films. And when you say uncensored French films, ah, yeah. <laughs> so, but what happened was um, those were the years when even I, as a professional, was kind of, you know, making a way into my career. And suddenly, Ashil. Um, was given another assignment and he had to leave Ahmedabad and after that we lost touch until another I guess 15 years and what happened uh, how we reconnected is totally a different story that I think will um, uh, will uh, connect as we go on but I would like to introduce Ashil as a phenomenal person who who, who knows Sanskrit, who has done a doctorate in Sanskrit and and he has an amazing sense of aesthetics in music, not just music, everything. And of course, he's a French man, so it says it all. But uh, we have been connected. Nobody is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, after I met Ashil again, after uh, uh, maybe a decade or a decade and a half, Ashil has uh, has um, kind of um, like evolved into into uh, the category of music, music publishing, and uh, uh, you know uh, the intellectual property rights for music. He has been on the board of uh, IPRS. He has been uh, doing a lot of amazing things to the bar. and uh, he has uh, helped me in a lot of ways. Now, I'd like to ask uh, uh, Ashil to you know introduce himself and uh, speak a little more about uh, your work, Ashil. Uh, yeah, after I left uh, Ahmedabad, I, I joined the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs and I was in charge of uh, uh, what was called at that time the audiovisual uh, section, which included uh, film, television, radio, and music. And uh, <coughs> I was based in uh, New Delhi and I was covering South Asia. And uh, so part of my job, I mean, main thing, main part of my job was to report to to France and the different uh, organizations. Uh, industries, relevant industries, what was happening in India in those different fields, cinema, television, radio, and uh, uh, music. I had also a charge of uh, 
amounts of press training, training of Indian journalists in in Europe. Um, so while I was doing my uh, market survey uh, uh, of uh, on the Indian music industry, I realized that uh, it was uh, uh, very uh, basic. Uh, there were music rights, yes. like a bag of potato that the middleman buys from the farmer who produced it and says now it is mine and now I'm going to sell it to the uh, people in the city. So that yeah. is how it, how it it was. And those who own this bag of potatoes, this bag of songs, um, I realized that they, they did not, nobody was bothered about uh, how the how to make money? I mean, in the sense, how the copyright system flows. Monetize it. How yeah, to how to monetize it fully in the way? Um, uh, I mean, a music company in in Europe or the US would would monetize it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was my my report. I gave it sometime uh, in the first quarter of 1993. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I went to visit the French Copyright Society uh, for Authors and Composers, SACEM. And when I looked into their database, there were only 11 Indian songs that were registered with the French Society. Yeah. One. The second is they told me that, look, we have at that time it was 200,000 French francs, which is equivalent maybe um, to today two hundred thousand dollars yep. uh, of rights which they had collected for Indian music but they didn't, didn't know whom to pay because no Indian music was uh, uh, registered mm. and um, then I found some other things some Indian in Cyprus who was registering all one and all uh, uh, Indian music that didn't belong to him. He was simply registering it in the name of his company. So oh. He started at that time and that went down until about 2001, 2002 until right. he was discovered and uh, so it was total chaos. Yeah. Uh, authors, com lyricists and composers, they were daily wages. Mm -hmm. Somebody calls them, I want a song, you make a song, you get the money, and that was it. Uh, they did not, uh, nobody was really aware that uh, the copyrights, which this man who has given you this money, yes. the copyrights that he acquires, is for your lifetime, plus mm -hmm. six years after your death. So although the ownership was no more with you, song had gone, the rights had been transferred, there was another owner, but that owner, his property depended on how you, how long you are going to live. Yeah, okay. So that is when I decided to, I, and it was a time when TV channels came up almost every day, there was a new channel being launched and so I thought something is happening uh, here, I don't know really what it is, but um, maybe what I know uh, can be, uh, I can make a living out of that. Yes. So I resigned from my uh, job in the French Foreign Service and started uh, Silk Road. Silk Road Communications, yeah. right. Yeah. And I think that was exactly the time, probably I rediscovered. No, no, that was in 94. 94. We we, you got in touch with me, I think it was in 2004. Something. 2002 or three. Yeah, yeah. Three probably, yes. Yes, yes. And um, like um, what had happened was um, I came in touch with uh, a musician in Pune, Pune and uh, we we uh, I, I used to be in uh, really love with one of the compositions of Adi Shankaracharya, not composition, but one of the verses of Adi Shankaracharya, and uh, that's called Atma Shatak. 
So um, I kind of rediscovered Atma Shatak from a musical viewpoint and uh, I asked this musical uh, music uh, uh, friend to sing it the way uh, I perceived it and I would accompany on the sarod. Now that started as a very small exercise and what happened was that, that recording on a very small, at that time we used to have a Walkman, we did the recording on a Walkman and it sounded good like my family members, my wife, my children, my friends, they say, oh wow this sounds amazing. Uh, are there any more such things? And uh, so we started uh, discovering more and more Adi Shankaracharya's verses. Atma Shatak, uh, after that, uh, Parapuja, Dhanyashtakam, and uh, Brahma Gyanavali, and so on. And we thought that it's coming out very well. Now, I met somebody in Pune, some architect. And he says, hey, these sound so great. Why don't you get in touch with a person I know so well called Ashil Forlair? I said, wait a minute. I know him. Now, this was after 20 years yeah. of me, Ashil, not, I mean, having uh, 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 separated as such. Yeah. It, it was 20 years, yes. Yeah. 20 years. So I immediately got in touch with the first reaction, I should say, this is amazing, leave it to me, I'm going to do the rest. I said, look, anyway, that's, and that's the beginning of uh, uh, what we call the Shankara uh, album. The Shankara album is all about Adi Shankaracharya's verses, um, uh, which uh, I just... Uh, mentioned and uh, th uh, that was the first album that Ashil and his Silk Road uh, uh, communications you know converted into a professional uh, music uh, I'd say a music album and you know released yeah. it throughout the well, world this and is, even as of this is interesting because uh, when you when you send me the the album and uh, of course, I had studied uh, Shankaracharya. I knew uh, who he was. I had read, uh, uh, yes, his work. Uh, and uh, so you send me the separate files, each instrument separate the studio, what we call studio files. And uh, when uh, we went into the into the studio and. Uh, the first time I listened to it, um, I, uh, in fact, uh, immediately after the, um, we listened first to all the, the songs, and then I told the, uh, uh, the studio engineer, I said, look, yeah, let's listen to it. You just put the vocal of Aparna Panchika and you put the Sarod of Bargo Mystery, you mute all the rest, hmm. all the other instruments. Right. And that was it. It was yes. so, it was, there was nothing to be added. No pads, not, no, no tabla, nothing. Uh, it, uh, we, because uh, the, uh, the philosophy of uh, Adi Shankaracharya, it's uh, so extreme um, in uh, Tiaga uh, yeah. uh, that I felt that, you know, adding anything more would be a betrayal of that philosophy. Yes. And it sounded so, so fantastic. Just yeah. your Sarod, which had that metal, that metallic sound of the sarod and that uh, uh, clear uh, voice of uh, Aparna. Uh, yes. it, was, it, it was a revelation uh, for me. And uh, so I told the, the engineer, just export them. I give them to my friend uh, in Paris for mastering. 
because that's it. It's not nothing more is required. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know how to show this. I don't know whether it's uh, it'll be appropriate to play just a little bit of a track from uh, Shivoham. Uh, uh, yeah, there it's available on all the streaming services. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's there. And uh, Ashil has been uh, uh, what he is. He has uh, put up the entire album on Spotify, on iTunes, on Amazon Prime, on all the music platforms. So all these, uh, all this music is available there as such. But that was amazing. And I think after the success of that album. Um, you did uh, prompt us to do something more. Uh, yes, we must also say that uh, we released the album, uh, the physical in those days, uh, with a 36 page booklet, with the original Sanskrit, with the translation, uh, yes, yes. and um, with some photographs to go, uh, relevant photographs to go with it. So it was a it was a beautiful uh, product, uh, um, and uh, yeah, it was uh, well received. And uh, so I thought that we have to now make a make a follow up. Yeah, yeah. And, and I do that. that's when you came back uh, <laughs> to me one day. Yes, with another idea. Yes, and that idea was uh, um, well. To well, the theme was peace. Now, how peace came into being was it was, I think, 2006 or 7, and on the 31st December night, you know, when you all have these uh, year changing parties, mm. so uh, and then you make resolutions. So somebody asked me, what's your resolution? I said, I want peace. Now, I don't know what it meant, but whatever it is, in a couple of days, peace. So there were some other verses of Shankaracharya which were dealing with peace. And the album which came up after that was entirely based on peace. Now, no, not not connecting it with the resolution, but it just happened naturally. But it had nothing to do with Shankaracharya. Uh, it was the, the the Shanti mantras of the Vedas. It was the Shanti mantras. And now the difference between the first album and the second was that uh, uh, one had to be very careful about you know bringing it to the same standard. Now, the Shanti Mantra was more of a travelogue. I had traveled to South Korea so many times. And at the time, there was a field recorder. The field recorder I took along with me so to South Korea. And uh, I recorded lots of music over there. I brought it back home here in Udaipur. And, uh, you know, like being into the field of say design you know you try to connect things so all those recordings uh, i connected with my sarod i played the sarod also in south korea we brought it all together here and somehow or the other weaved totally another you know what do you call um, garment or whatever out of these uh, these collections and each of these uh, compositions uh, were rendered as uh, Shanti mantras, like, uh, you know, Om Dhyo Shanti, Namaste Sate. I don't know, Ashil, that Namaste Sate yeah. is something we, we, should, uh, we should show. Uh, do you have a clip or should I share it with you? Uh, you can share it. I don't have it. Uh, I don't. Okay. If you like to speak something about Namaste, yeah, then because uh, uh, you, when I got the, uh, you did the recordings and uh, you did some mixing and you sent me the, the studio files. 
and uh, <clears throat> uh, immediately on, on, on listening, I saw that you know you were going into the opposite direction uh, from uh, Shankara uh, because it was lush. There were uh, um, was Korean instrument, South Korean instruments. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Jing. Uh, Hegum. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and then uh, I I struggled uh, in the studio because um, I saw where you wanted to go, but at the same time I felt that uh, we could go farther and. Uh, just at that time, uh, came to Delhi for a, for a concert, a, an Iranian uh, musician, Pedram, Pedram Dirakshani, whom I had produced in 2002 in uh, France. Yes. And uh, an al superb album called Tehran Nights. Yeah, Tehran Nights. Uh, Pedram came with his... Uh, with his uh, uh, musicians <clears throat> because he had a band and uh, so I took advantage of uh, him and so I say you know come to the studio and I think you know, we can uh, uh, because he had uh, several Iranian instruments he had also the Duff uh, mm -hmm. because I felt that uh, the tabla in the Shanti Mantras was was not blending well. It was too, it was too stand, standing out too much. It was it disturbed me. So the daf is more uh, um, a little goes bit with the muted. Yes. And uh, in one uh, in uh, in one uh, song, uh, even we recorded we use guitar. Uh, because the the sound engineer was a very good guitarist, and yes. uh, you because in also one song you had used the saxophone, Luke Jolly, <laughs> Luke Jolly, whom uh, you told me you had met just by chance in the streets of Udaipur, and said, you know, come home, have a dinner with me. So he came with his saxophone, and you made yes. him to listen to that song, and he added. And you recorded his saxophone, and it was just perfect. Yeah, just what was needed. It's, it's super Vayam uh, Tuan. It's uh, and look. Uh, so I thought, you know, we have Korean, we have saxophone, we have guitar, we have uh, um, uh, Iranian instruments. It suddenly, you know, became so lush. And um, uh, I think we uh, we spend I spend a full week in the studio, uh, six days uh, for the additional recording and the mixing, and then got it uh, got it mastered in Paris. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and then I... and then we decided uh, you remember to do a podcast. Day, nobody was talking about podcast in those days. So I say, let's make a podcast to use for the lounge. Right, right, right. And uh, this was in 2007. And uh, it was not yet, uh, I mean, internet was not that fast uh, as it is today. So anyway, you recorded the podcast with our friend Arno. Arno. It, yes. And uh, it's a 17-minute uh, podcast, yes, uh, yes, yes. which uh, tells the whole story of these uh, Shanti yeah. Yeah. I think it, it's a good idea to uh, to show the video. And you uh, you managed to videograph the Namaste Sate. So I think we can now, share. That, that is an, that is another. Uh, uh, it's another uh, story. Uh, which is in the same, <laughs> a little bit the same way as uh, you meeting Luc Jolie yes. uh, in the streets of Udaipur. I had I I go regularly to Goa, and in, in a 
in a joint on the on the beach uh, having a beer and uh, started to talk with a guy and his name is Jean-Marc Abella. Jean-Marc Abella. Jean-Marc Abella. And he, he was there, was a friend of his, was a, a Russian photographer, young guy, he's short of money. He said, no, I'm still, I want to go to Kathmandu and then I go home. And I said, what do you do? He says, uh, well, I'm a videographer. I said, do you have a video camera? He said, yes, I have a you know, nice one. So then I said, you know, why don't you drop in, in, uh, in Bombay, see me when you come, you pass through Bombay and uh, I'll give you money and for making, uh, it will help you also because they were really short of money, both of them. So they came to Bombay. I explained to him a little bit what I wanted. Uh, I said, look, because he was going to Allahabad, Varanasi and uh, Kathmandu. So I said, look, uh, I, I want the rituals that when India awakes in the morning, mm -hmm. what is happening? Just show that. That's it. And uh, I said, but go and meet uh, Bargao. So they traveled to Udaipur. They came to meet you. Uh, that Russian photographer whose name now escapes me. Uh, he made about uh, 600 photographs of you. I paid him also to, I gave him money, so uh, it helped him. And uh, uh, which makes that, you know, even the photographs I'm using today are the photographs that he made. He made some beautiful photographs of you. Yeah. Jean-Marc, uh, he, they went up to Kathmandu. He went back to Canada and he sent me the first rough edit. Uh -huh. And then uh, there was trust, you know, because I had given them the money. They could have disappeared. So, but that was not even, I mean, I, I didn't even think of that because it was not the spirit of the Shanti Mantras. Mm. And so he sent me the rough edit and uh, so it was back and forth, change this and sh shorten that. Uh, have, don't you have another frame? It's a, and then suddenly I realized that there, is, there are two stories. Uh, he shot some, if you watch the, the video is available on uh, YouTube called Namaste Sate Te uh, by Argao Mystery. When you watch, uh, there are two teams. One is, uh, the, it opens with the board. And several times throughout the film, you see a board. Now the board is the, uh, the vessel, uh, it's our body, it's what our, the human existence, uh, what we use to cross the river of life. And that board is, the Shanti Mantras, it is the rituals in yeah. the morning. Uh, these are the, what helps us cross uh, this life. Yeah, yeah. And, I think, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, finally, the, the, the other, there, were three, there are three stories, one in Allahabad, Varanasi, and one in Kathmandu. Mm. And when you look at it, there is the tra always a transmission between grandparent and grandchild or between father yeah. and children. But what is, uh, we realized this uh, when we did the editing, it was not consciously that uh, Jean-Marc did that, is that the transmission is between grandparents or father and daughter. It, the transmission is always with grandfather and girl, with the girl, with the boys. You have the boys there, but they're not. It's the, the girl who is closer and who wants. Anyway, so we, it, it was a, it's a very moving uh, yes. video that. Uh, that I, think, I think we should see that video now. Uh, yeah. I, I'll share screen and uh, see Maybe. if I can show that video. Um, Satyajit, you'll need to uh, enable he, he, maybe screen. I can send him the the, the the original file and he can uh, he can. Uh, no, he, I have it here. 
Yeah. But uh, he uh, City Live has to uh, share the. I mean, allow. I mean, uh, allow a screen participation, like uh, screen sharing. Mm. So I'll I'll just ask him. At least can be edited afterwards. No, he's not editing. Uh, he may do it, but uh, I think it's better to to at least you know do it at this moment. Uh, let me just ask him. And you because when oh, okay, you I think, I think yeah. I got it. I think I can do it now. Uh, it, 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 it will be of better quality than to Zoom. Uh, but uh, we will need to, you know, somewhere or the other, we just need to do this. Uh, let me see where Peace Mantra is. Okay. Uh, Namaste Satya. There's a preview here. Mm. Can you see my screen? Yeah. All right.
indeed now that was that was really that was nice so ashil uh i think this particular number especially the way the visuals the way the um the cameramanship for the song has been done i think everything fits has done a wonderful job everything fits yes yes yeah, in fits. fact uh, there is also uh, some there are some shots from rishikesh hmm you like shanjula we can see yeah. yes 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 all right so i think um, uh, ashil now i think maybe you'd like to uh, as a concluding um, remark you might like to share with the viewers uh, uh about the 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 future of the music industry and uh, uh, when uh, you're creative you've been uh, no, nobody knows uh, you can uh, <laughs> might as well go to an astrologer oh my god <laughs> nobody knows uh, those who say they know they don't they know little but what is uh, uh first before we go to that we have to speak also of your collaboration with corrado rossi and the yes. road to india oh yeah of course which again oh, was which again was uh you know pioneering it was done in 2009 2010 yes entirely over the internet you never met that was the you first file yeah yes. you shared files and uh, uh, there was also you did with some uh, other artists to more show and a few others oh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, you completed that uh, uh, work with corrado and uh, you may you don't know it but you know i represent now some of corrado's work in india uh, which he has done for a publisher <laughs> in italy a big publisher uh, called flipper music <clears throat> uh, who my uh, whose rights are represented in india uh, mm -hmm. so that too was uh, it's a beautiful instrumental uh, album uh, sarod piano mm -hmm. and um, we thought it would be the beginning of we called it like a workshop uh the sarod workshop and uh, we are still waiting to to get some uh, new uh, productions uh, a, a follow up to road to india yeah. yes in fact just a few days back i had a conversation with corrado and uh, we did kind of a meeting with him and uh, yeah. uh with uh, uh, let's see how it turns up yeah but yeah no was corrado but was other somebody else uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Believe yes. the same artist. Uh, don't walk the same road again. You know. Get, uh, in fact, I have already identified someone uh, in uh, uh, in uh, Pondicherry. So yeah. we'll do that. Yeah. Road to India has been an amazing because uh, Shanti Mantra and Shankara were of a genre which is very different from uh, road to india now road to india is each like, album is extremely different extremely different yes very different uh, uh, and that is the the beauty of your uh, work uh, yeah uh bargo because i mean in all three of course there is sarod but uh, i don't know of any uh, any uh, musician uh, uh, in india who has done such uh, diversity in the when i mean diversity uh i don't speak just of collaboration you know i have done an album was the london symphonic orchestra that's different that's you know yeah. uh, here it is really it's your own music and which each time comes out very uh, very differently yeah and uh, yeah i am eagerly awaiting uh, for the next uh, production now especially after this meeting i think i'm feeling very inspired and i would definitely get into another creation yeah and uh, yeah i i really you remember we had uh, i suggested to you, we had discussed this uh, some uh, 
a few years ago that uh, uh, there is a, what you have done with Shankara that, and Chanti Mantra, that they taking the original texts and putting them into music. Yes. Uh, 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 why don't you do it with the Kama Sutra, uh, yeah. for example? Uh, because it is a it's a beautiful text. Uh, and uh, which, idea, yes. uh, which invites music. Which invites music, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, Nobody I'll, has really, I mean, to some, some things have been done abroad, but... Uh, yes, 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 indeed. Keep, indeed, uh, indeed. Yeah, but it's something that you should keep in the, at the yeah. back of your mind. Yeah. And uh, to answer your question, really, no more less about the music industry but really what is the role of a music publisher mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, to 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 bring uh to to an artist um to help the artist make his imagination his his what he wants to make it a reality yes uh that in the end there is a product there is a result and uh, this is really the fundamental uh, work of a publisher. It is not just to wait for people to come and say, I have a finished product and uh, say, okay, give me all the rights and I will promote it. These are big, this is marketing. This is, this is nothing to do with music publishing. Uh, yeah. uh, so that uh, we are in a, so when you ask about the music industry, a lot has changed in the last 10 years, 12 years, is that uh, today, uh, every day so much music is coming out that uh, if you don't hit it, you know, right in the beginning, in the top, you, the next day you're forgotten. Uh, uh, do you know how many uh, new songs Spotify releases every year how many 1.4 million my god see that's a big number so who can listen to 1.4 million so uh, and the, and nobody listens to albums you see if you if you have an album that comes out some if the, if the first track person doesn't like he moves on he, he has no time to he or she yeah, so the consumption of music is is changing and uh, i'm not sure uh, where uh, where it really leads but what i know is that when you are when an artist is strong enough to and stays within a certain within his parameters uh, then Today he can find, let's say he, he has only 200,000 people who like his music. Mm. But before, when there was the physical product, these 200,000 people who live in different parts of the world, you, yes. you, you cannot release your album in Colombia. Or, so today, these 200,000 people you can find through the internet. Yeah. So it is really to build the artist, to build a following, to people say, oh, I like this music. And when something comes out, oh, I want to listen to his uh, new uh, production. And uh, this is one way uh, of looking at it. The other is, uh, you know, just throw whatever you have, throw it on the wall and see what sticks. Yeah, yeah, that's well. That's that's really is, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, the thing is, that great. I think music, uh, music is a. Uh, we've had a wonderful conversation. Yeah. I think Ashil, I've lost your communication. Is it? You have kind of frozen in a space. I can hear you. Hello. Hello. Satyajit, are you there? Hello. 
Now it's okay, I think. Yeah, you have. Bango has cut his. Uh, no, no, no. Now it's okay. Yeah. Unmute. Yeah, oh. Ask for unmute. Okay. Ah, oh, there you are. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think we just suddenly got. But anyway, yeah. we were reaching at uh, towards the end of our, uh, mm -hmm. I think, conversation. Yeah. It's already uh, been a fairly interesting, absorbing, and uh, mm, very long discussion about this. But anyway, if you'd like to give any parting words to our viewers, uh, Ashil, you you can you can do that. Well, uh, 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 I would say that uh, uh, if somebody makes music, uh, you see, today it has become so easy to make music release that uh, a lot of people who, uh, who release music shouldn't be releasing music, frankly. It's too bad. Uh, just like, you know, everyone in college is making poems. It doesn't mean that they are poets. But there is a time in life where you, you know, you do everything, you sing something, and, and today you don't even need to sing. I mean, you have auto tune or whatever. So, but for those who have really the, the vocation of being an artist, and uh, they have, you know, they, uh, they have to persevere. And uh, persevere. it is not new, it, is, it has been for. For always, it has always been that you have what we call you have to pay your dues to the devil. Yeah. You have to, uh, as you know, Shahrukh Khan once said. He said, you know, it, it took me twenty years to become an overnight sensation. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, this is what it is. I only wish that those who really have that fire in them to meet. Uh, uh, because you can't do it on your own. You need help. You need a team to work with you. And uh, I wish them to to meet uh, uh, two uh, music publishers or two uh, record labels uh, okay. who will uh, believe and say, "All right, we stick together. We'll do. You know, for, for a few years, they will work together. And even if it doesn't work in out commercially in the beginning, we will persevere, we will. And uh, that is what uh, I wish uh, to those who have really the fire in them to meet uh, such people, because there are in the industry people like this who have come up. Uh, Great. Yeah. Great. So, uh, thank you once again, uh, City Live. Yes, uh, it, it's a great. Uh, uh, initiative uh, of, yes. of yours, uh, we are uh, very grateful. Yeah, it's also people like you. You know, they are also you are also part of building up artists because if you are not there, it, it will not reach to the to those people who may uh, like right. this type yeah. of music. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, we thank you for that. Yeah. Okay, so Satyajit, I think um, we can. Uh, okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Up here. Uh -huh. Live, a platform to sharing your thoughts.